configured management IP address on your firewall like I have configured here which is 192.168.48.130 in your case it will be depend upon your subnet you are using now the time comes when you are going to jump onto the configuration part right for example you need to configure the network interface IP addresses the zones the virtual routers and then after that the policies because these are the main section you're going to configure but before that we need to understand the firewall a little bit and that understanding the firewall is come from the dashboard so what is this dashboard basically because this dashboard is going to give us a little bit overview of the firewall so in today's topic we are going to discuss about the dashboard so let's get started you can see the first option which is high availability and the second option is here interfaces we're going to discuss high availability later you know end of this recording and we'll start with these interfaces first but let me tell you one thing because once you configure this firewall you might not see this high availability and the interfaces then what you have to do is you have to go to here widgets and in system you can see these are the option so let me do this let me delete this and as you can see there is no interfaces or HA showing right so you have to go to widgets and in systems you can see the interfaces and high availability now let's first discuss about the interfaces as you can see it just you know it's giving the status of the interfaces what are connected and what are not so from the dashboard you can see which are the interfaces are connected if they are connected you can see in green if they do not have any connectivity you would see in gray and if they are connected but they are might be down or maybe disconnected you might also see some kind of you know the red here so that is the overview of the interfaces now let's move on to the next which is the general information in general information you're going to see some basic things for example the device name this device name is nothing but the host name you give to your Palo Alto firewall like I have given to my firewall which is PA VMs like Palo Alto virtual machine but if you have your um, devices in many many offices for example you have like got 50 or something uh, branch offices and you have firewall in, in each branch offices and they might be located in different cities or maybe different countries then you can give the firewall name like uh, firewall one depend upon the country you know and depend upon the model number so basically you are going to give the host name which will make sense that when you are trying to access this firewall because in future you are not going to access this firewall individually right you might going to have for example panorama and from panorama you're going to access all those hundred devices and at that point i guess if you have the proper host name then it would be very easier for you to understand okay this firewall is located in that particular location or something so it is up to you which host name you would like to give but this is all about the host name now the next is which is the management ip address this is the same ip address we get the access of this firewall uh, basically this management ip address or interface this is out of band interface for example this interface is not going to take participate in production traffic for example we have this firewall in here right and on this firewall you can have like multiple interfaces but two basic interfaces we can talk about which is inside interface and outside interface and to access this firewall what we are doing basically we have connected by using an MGMT which is also known as management interface so this IP is basically assigned to this management interface so what is use of this management interface basically what happens sometimes you do some kind of you know or maintenance on this firewall or for some reason your interface might gonna go down which is connected to switch for example in here or this might be connected to cloud to internet so at those point or uh, this interface are going to like non-accessible so we do not use these interfaces for management purpose so this is the advantage of using the management interface where we can access this firewall even though the interfaces which belong to the production traffic is down 
now the next is the subnet mask and the gateway this is of course like you are going to give the subnet mask to this firewall depending upon your subnet that management interface belong to and then if we move on to the next which we have the ip version 6 right currently we are discussing all about ip version 4 but if you have the ip version 6 then you're going to assign ip address depend upon your ip version 6 environment so after configuring that you might gonna see the ip address belong to the ip version 6 as well now the next is the mac address of this interface so this is basically you know binding between this mac address and the ip address we're using so in future you would like to do some troubleshooting where this ip address is connected on the switch for example this is your palo alto firewall and you have connected to your production switch right and this is belong to inside interface and this is something connected to management interface now you'd like to know where which port is connected on your switch because if you have like very large enterprise network then you might gonna do some troubleshooting then you can have several ways to find this you know kind of physical connectivity if you have the tags on these switch you can find the location but if you have like hundreds of cable connected then sometimes you have only way to understand uh, from the ip address and from the mac address of the firewall to understand where it's connected so what you're going to do on your switch you can going to put the command which is show r it depends upon the switch you're going to use so on cisco for example it uses show arp and in the show up you're going to get the mac address table along with its ip address table and once you get the mac address what you're going to do you're going to use next command on the switch which is show mac address table and then after that you can use pipe include and you can put the mac address of this firewall and then it will going to show you okay it's connected to interface for example this connected to interface 10 this is connected to interface 1 and you you are going to get the information which is connected to this ip address gigabit 0 slash 10 for example so on this switch you can use this mac address information for troubleshooting purpose as well as to find the location of this connectivity now after that there is a model number so model number is totally depend upon which firewall you're using for example if you are using 200 series firewall or might be using 3000 series firewall or you might be using 5000 series firewall it's totally depend upon that and you are going to get the model number in here in my case you only see the vm because this is vm based this is not the hardware but in your case if you have hardware then you might gonna see the model number you have purchased from now what is the important of using this model number basically what happens when you are going to upgrade your palo alto firewall then what you're gonna do you're going to download the software from palo alto cloud which is belong to the which model number because once you do the refresh on your palo alto firewall it's going to show you like all different types of you know software is in there available but the one you're going to utilize which belong to this proper model number so for example if you are using 3000 series then you're going to select 3000 series and you're going to select like download and then after that it's download you're going to do the install so you're not going to select any other model number just the model number you are using and that is the use of the knowing the model number from this dashboard now the next is the serial number you can see the serial number on your firewall if you have the hardware device but if you have virtual machine you might not gonna see the serial number because you need to register your virtual machine with the palo alto and they are going to assign the serial number for the virtual machine but if it is a uh, hardware then you already going to see the serial number because it's already been registered with the palo alto support now what is use of having this serial number for example you are facing issue on your firewall for example uh, there is some commit is not happening or firewall is getting rebooted on its own so what you do basically you go to palo alto um, portal and then after that you try to open case with them at that point is going to ask you okay what is the serial number of your firewall 
once you have the valid serial number they're going to open a case with your palo alto firewall so that is the use of the serial number when you are opening case with them now the next you see which is cpu id and uuid which is also known as universal unique id so this is important for example if you have the virtual machine and you would like to use this virtual machine as a production at that time what you have to do is you have to register this vm with palo alto and they're going to register with the cpu id and this uuid then only you can use this palo alto firewall in your production other than that this vm is just going to work as a standalone now the next is the software version this is basically the software is installed on this palo alto firewall in my case it is 904 but in your case it could be anything depend upon which version you have installed right now since we are recording this uh, video it is going to be version 10.2 they have released and you might see if it is the latest version you are using now the question is what is the use of having this software version information here let's suppose you are on the version which is 10.2 or something current and latest version and in future you decided to go to 10.3 or something now let's assume after upgrading this firewall on 10.3 you might start up facing some issue like commit is not happening the firewall is become slow or its CPU and memory is getting high utilized so it can be any type of problem you might face after upgrading the firewall it doesn't happen in most cases but sometimes it happens and I have seen that so what you do basically when you open case with Palo Alto firewall you going to tell them like you were on 10.2 then you upgraded to 10.3 and after upgrading the firewall you started facing these are the issue so what they basically going to do they ask you to upgrade to 10.3 to something you know 10.2 something you know it was for example here was one and they will ask you to upgrade to next version because that might be one of the bug they found and it might be fixed in the next version and let's suppose if they do not have any bug fix into the latest version or their latest version is going to come near after a month or two then they might going to ask you okay you can just roll back to the previous version or they might have fixed the issue in the previous to different version for example you were on the 10.2 maybe 3 and they might ask you okay do one thing you just go back to 10.2 dot 10.2 dot 2 something like that so this is something you know happens sometime they might ask you to go upgrade or you can just go for the downgrade so it's totally depend upon the situation you're stuck in and that is where the software version come where you would like to keep a track of which version you are using in and which version you are going into the future and if something happened you can just roll back to the previous version or you can go to a different version now the next information we see here which is global protect agent this belong to the vpn client if you have the users they would like to use vpn then for them the vpn client is important and you are going to get the software version of that vpn client in here if you have configured that vpn then after that there's some you know other version we see here which belong to like application version then url filtering version and global protect pointless vpn version so these are the services if you have taken like additional services or additional plugins from palo alto then you are going to get those information in here